Welcome to Upfront on the Voice of America. My name is Jackson Vungani. So October is a very important month for millions of Africans across the continent, from Nigeria to Uganda to Guinea to Zambia. October is the month in which these countries gained their hard-fought independence from their former colonial masters. For Ugandans, October 9, 1962 was the date when they raised their flag and lowered the Union Jack, effectively bringing an end to British rule. But as many Ugandans mark 57 years of the end to colonial rule, there are many others in the country, especially those in the opposition, who refuse to celebrate. Their major complaint is that the current government is using the same colonial era tactics against citizens who are merely expressing themselves or engaging in legitimate political dissent. For example, they point to a recent law that bans Ugandans from wearing the red beret, commonly worn by Bobby Wine and thousands of his supporters who are part of a grassroots political movement known as People Power. The Ugandan government says that those caught wearing or selling the red beret would face prosecution under military law. My next guests, Karim Tambi and Arawo Amenyi, are part of a committee that represents the People Power movement in the diaspora. They say that this law is one of the many ways that President Museveni's government is using security as a basis to repress the opposition ahead of the 2021 elections. Thank you both for Thank joining me. Thank you for me. having us. Um, you for having us. So let me ask you guys, as young people celebrating 57 years uh, since independence of your country, um, I think October 2nd, October 9th is when you received independence. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see as some of the, the, the big milestones or the big achievements that your country has made? And 60 years from now, where do you want to see your country? Thank you so much, Jackson, for having us. Uganda's independence was achieved on the 9th of October, 1962. And, you know, it took, it took a turn. Um, I, I, I wouldn't even waste time going into that. It has been hijacked for 33 years um, by the current regime of Yoweri Kabuta Museveni, who has been um, the president for the past 33 years. Um, the independence of the people was cut short by taking away their freedoms. Um, we are looking at, at the arms of the government, which are not independent, where you have the judiciary, where you have the legislature, and you have the, uh, the administration that is not independent. You, have, you don't have an independent uh, police force. You don't have an independence army. So everything is working to the tunes of the current regime. And um, that takes away people's independence mm -hmm. in a way. So I don't feel like we're fully uh, independent as Ugandans. And that's why you see us here today trying to fight back and let our people reclaim their independence from the 33 years of... Do you feel like the no. Ugandans are independent no, right now? No, no, we're not. So when you said milestones, I was, a little, you know, I was reluctant to even um, say anything about milestones because as of right now, our maternal health is not good. Mm -hmm. Children are dying at delivery. Our infrastructure is not good. Our hospitals are not good. So if you look back in time, things are actually worse than they were. And no, for we, you, that doesn't mean you're independent. No, we're not. We're not independent at all. So there's nothing to celebrate 57 years from now, you're saying. That would be unfair to say that there has not been any achievement under M7 era. Right? right now, Museveni is for NRM supporters, for his supporters and for his family. As far as ordinary Ugandans, our school system, our healthcare infrastructure, um, basic necessities, basic hospitals. Malago Hospital, where I was born when I went home, um, there's still women sitting on the floor. There's still women who have to buy gloves, have to buy you know materials if they want to deliver a baby. Um, it's, it's worse off than when I lived in Uganda. Mm -hmm. So to me, that is not uh, something to celebrate. So these last um, independent celebrations on October 9th, it was basically NRM propaganda. You know, unfortunately, we had the president of Zimbabwe being honored, being given a medal of honor mm -hmm. um, by Museveni. Manangagwa was one of the guests. Exactly. He was one of the guests. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, you know, he said, uh, he called Museveni his elder brother, and he aspires to be like him. I said, wait, 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 <laughs> Zimbabweans, you're in trouble. <laughs> You know, so um, we just have very basic things that are not working for ordinary Ugandans. And so for that, mm -hmm. Uganda is not yet fully no, independent. 
independent. We're not free. We're not. What free. kind of battles uh, would you be fighting, or will your you know future generations be fighting 60, 60 years from now, based on some of the mistakes that are being made currently? Um, first of all, I think we need to reclaim. Uh, we need to reclaim our power as as a people. We need to reclaim our institutions. We have to get the institutions back to function for everybody. Our freedom of speech, our freedom of assembly, our freedom of expression is being under attack. Mm -hmm. With the recent OTT tax, for example, we are taxed on your social media. Mm -hmm. Even the parliament members themselves, when they were taxed, they, were, they, they didn't like it and they wanted to reverse it, but it's already, it's already law. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we have Dr. Stella Nyanzi in Lazira prison right now because she wrote poetry you know, Stella Nyanz is one of the most outspoken uh, activists in yes, Uganda, yes. Uh, currently in, in prison yes. for, w w what was the uh, issue? Um, she, for offending, the well, for misuse of cyber uh, materials, mm. um, but, uh, but specifically, specifically for, for insulting the the. Exactly, for insulting a public figure, mm. which is, in our constitution, should be covered for freedom of speech right. and freedom of expression. Um, so you said, you know, what are we going to be fighting for as Ugandans? Basic rights as freedom of expression, freedom of assembly. Right now, Ugandans cannot protest on the streets. That's mm. why it's up to us here in the diaspora to protest on, you know, on their behalf and make sure that any, any message that we have is amplified here um, internationally. Uh, both of you came in wearing the red beret. Yes. Uh, I want to mention to our, our listeners that are, and our viewers that the red beret right now has been designated as a military clothing and any civilian who is uh, found wearing it uh, will be arrested. Uh, the red beret is also a symbol of uh, the people power movement has been won by yourselves, by Bobby Wan and many others in Uganda. Let me ask you this, what was the intention behind the banning of the red beret? Well, first of all, people power movement is growing. Um, it was labeled first as something that is just coming out of the ghetto or from the slums or these young, unserious people. But you have people from all walks of life that have joined the movement, scholars, academics, artists, musicians, um, you know, old people, young people, middle class, uh, lower class. High, you have all uh, walks of Ugandans who are part of this movement. And it's um, not only in Uganda, but it's also internationally. So you have Ugandans in the diaspora, as well as our allies, our friends in Europe and in the United States, um, all over the world, who are part of this movement. Mm -hmm. So I think this, this uh, labeling a hat, which is, you know, the people power movement, is, this is maybe a symbol, but it's more than that. It's about the grassroots movement, about individuals coming mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. um, we, it's a, it's we, a distraction. We, we were on the yeah. streets of Kampala real quick. We were mm -hmm. on the streets of Kampala, and we have some reactions from young Ugandans talking about what they see or what they think about this banning of the Red Beret. Let's watch it. Hello up front, my name is Tukamshawa Evers from Kampala, Uganda. And what I think about the ban of the Red Belt is that it is depriving of people's rights because it is our rights and red is a color, more so about that. And I think that I have to put on any color I like. It's my color. If I like red, I can put on red as how other people are putting on other colors like yellow, green. Oh, up front. My name is Robert from Kampala. It wasn't really okay. The government just shaking. They are fearing. They are just fearing for nothing. There's no there's no problem with that tax. Just you can see then the people in government they, they are they are yellow tops. No one caring but those with people power they just care. But they are just shaking. Hello up front. My name is Nambazem Zafar. I'm from Kampala. The ban of the belt. We have our right to wear what we want, but not it's like abusing our rights of wearing what you want. Are you not? You, they have guns. They will wear the red cape up to the last until our last last man. We are not going to stop that. We will wear our capes. I think. It was not right for the government to ban it because everyone has his or her own freedom. I have freedom to dress up the way I want. If I want a red cape, hair, I should put it on. So I think it wasn't a right decision for the government to ban them. I don't know how they connect to the military because they normally wear a green and this is red. And red is a symbol of brotherhood. Yeah. 
Those were young students in Kampala talking about uh, what they think about the banning of the Red Beret. Joining me in studio here, still in the studio, is uh, Karim Mutambi and Arao, many members of the People Power Movement in, in Uganda. So you were still talking about um, what you see, what you feel like was the real intention behind this. Uh, uh, it's more than a symbol, like you said. Do you see this as making it harder for you guys to mobilize your supporters by banning this? No, because um, our supporters are very creative. So in, on Ugandan streets, even though the um, berets are banned, you have women and girls and you know young men are, are finding different ways, different hats, different scarves that are red, uh, basically being very creative about having um, the people power gear on. Mm -hmm. So I don't think this is going to stop uh, people from getting together. Are there people who have been arrested so far? Yes, of course. There have been people arrested so far for that, and also protests, not protests, gatherings that have been broken up that are uh, led by People Power. Speaking of gatherings, uh, Bobby Wine, the leader of the People Power movement, his concerts, he has not been able to perform in the past, what, how many years, like a year or two? Uh, most Over of these 157 concerts have been cancelled right. yes. since he came to Parliament. Mm. Go ahead, tell, um, tell us a little bit more about, about so, that. Yeah. Over 157 concerts have been cancelled, and what the, uh, what the police always says is that uh, they don't have the capacity to secure and, and, and serve at these concerts to, to offer their services mm. in terms of security. They crowd always, control. Yeah, mm -hmm. they always claim they don't have enough uh, force for crowd control. However, by the morning, of any concert that is always announced, you would find thousands, hundreds of thousands of uh, uh, police officers, the army, they always surround off his, his, his house. Bobby his Wine's house, house. Mm -hmm. right. His house. And other um, opposition leaders' houses are always condoned. Uh, plus, the venue always uses, which is his uh, uh, resort beach in Basabala, mm -hmm. it is always condoned on. They always have the army and the police surrounded mm. Sur surrounded mm -hmm. but also so the, re the, re the reasoning have. that uh, they don't have the manpower to right. to contain uh, uh, the crowds mm -hmm. uh, the crowd it's, also, control it's also is another way of controlling our freedoms of expression like mm -hmm. she was talking about mm -hmm. them very hard earlier they have been using these tactics tomorrow don't wear the red beret and uh, i think two weeks ago we had a minister uh Eddie Tumine, mention it that he knows uh, the Red Berry movement is part of a global uh, terrorist organization, which we are here to say that it was a complete lie mm. um, because they are scared. Uh, the government is scared of the people power movement. So what they are doing, they're trying to create any, any reasons to create hatred among the people of Uganda. But if you are to talk about the real terrorists in Uganda, you cannot forego the NRM government, according to what they have been doing. Uh, let's uh, move on real quick to another uh, topic. The, the former uh, Inspector General of Police, uh, General Kale Kaihura, was uh, sanctioned by the U.S. government. Mm. How effective are those sanctions, and what does it mean for Ugandans that uh, one of their former, I uh, guess, uh, leaders was sanctioned by the U.S. government? Um. I think it's a, it's it's it sends out a message mm -hmm. uh, that uh, nobody is above the law. Um, we know a lot of people who have been working with the current regime in Uganda have been vict have been violating basic human rights mm -hmm. and, and and civil liberties of Ugandans. And the message uh, in the sanctions is that the international community is watching. Mm -hmm and they are not going to let them get away with it this time. Mm. Uh, Kaihura was one, and um, we anticipate to see more coming. So whoever is there and has been you know, involved in violating Ugandan's human rights, Ugandan's freedoms uh, of association of speech, um, the international community is watching because they are our allies. Um, most of our Ugandans who live in a diaspora send an enormous amount of money back home. Mm -hmm. It's their money that is being abused. Mm -hmm. And also to the people who live in these countries, the United States and in, in, in Europe, there is a lot of money that is being sent. Remittances. Mm -hmm. Remittances. Uganda, yes. Uganda send yes. uh, over half a billion dollars yes. to Uganda yes. Yes. in remittances. Yes. So and you, can, you, feel, you feel like you can use that as a leverage? Yes, yes. definitely. Yes, you, can, you can use that as a leverage. And also, we as the diaspora here, mm. also it's our role 
as a people to highlight and advocate for the human rights of, of Ugandans if they are in danger. It is also our role to reach out mm -hmm. to the leaders here because mm -hmm. most of the Ugandans here are taxpayers. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, and US they citizens. They, yes, and US citizens. Mm -hmm. I mean, they wouldn't want to see their tax dollars being, you know, improvised to, uh, to, to subsidize dicta di dictators on the continent of Africa. So that is another message out of that. No, so yeah. aside from uh, mobilizing uh, resources, mm -hmm. How important is the diaspora as a constituency? Perry mentioned something when he said the international community, mm -hmm. right? Ugandan diaspora, we're part of that international community. We are taxpayers. Many of us are dual citizens, just like myself. So I, uh, you know, I'm a Ugandan, and I, as a U.S. citizen, I don't want my taxpayers going to support the military in, in Uganda. In, in form of foreign aid. Right, in, in, for, in, in terms of foreign aid, right, exactly. Right. Um, uphold, you know, propping up the military in Uganda, which is in turn going to use tanks and tear gas on uh, kids in Kampala or in Lira or in Arua, you know? Mm. So I think that's our role as the diaspora is, um, you know, we get these criticisms that the People Power Movement is a Western project, and it's not. It's um, committed Ugandans in Uganda and in the diaspora who are, are sick and tired of seeing these human rights abuses and we want to do something about it. Uh, for both of you, as we come to the mm -hmm. end of our conversation, Arao and Karim, um, people will say that um, people power movement, mm. uh, some analysts will say people power movement is just about regime change. They just want to see Museveni gone. Uh, aside from, say, removing the, the, the person in power currently and, and having a, a peaceful transition of power to whoever the next person will be, what else do you want for Ugandans? I get this question a lot, and um, and it's posed exactly just just like you said. Mm -hmm. People power is not just anti Museveni. What we're fighting for is the dignity and human rights for all Ugandans, regardless of political affiliation. You know, all Ugandans deserve good maternal health care. All Ugandans deserve infrastructure. All Ugandans deserve schools that work. Um, all Ugandans deserve um, a country where basic services and basic needs are met. Uganda is a rich country, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's not trickling down to our citizens. Uganda is receiving foreign aid, but most of our budget is, is on the military. The military that is it's used to to hurt you know tanks and tear gas that's used on our people. So um, it, we're working for a Uganda that works for all Ugandans. Right now, Uganda only works for NRM supporters and Museveni's family, and that's unacceptable. NRM supporters are also Ugandans, though, mm. right? <laughs> It's not working for most of us. Gotcha. Yeah. I want to thank both of you, Arawa, Meni, and Karim Mutambi for coming yeah. in today. Thank you. Thank you very much for speaking to us. You're welcome.